I started the discussion with uh, uh, trying to make the point that uh, purpose rather than goals are important in, uh, in beginning and being successful in an exercise program. I used the verse from 1 Thessalonians 5.23 that says, uh, And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and your soul and your body be preserved complete at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I talked about that... Um, what that is really saying, the word complete and um, uh, entirely, it means to be whole and, and finished. Uh, I, I think for me personally that comes together when I think about, I put that together in, in purpose uh, and uh, perhaps the way it, it comes together to me is in these areas I, I, I'm commanded in a sense to be not the best, but the best that I can be. And that's an interesting fact, I think, or an interesting statement to think about. Uh, being the best, as opposed to being the best that we can be. Because over and over again, our parents and our teachers and our coaches encourage us to be the best in something. That is destined to frustration, because we can't always be the best. But on the other hand, I can always be the best that I can be. And I remember I learned that really from my son. Um, at a, at a, he was in a wrestling tournament, um, and he was wrestling at the 145-pound weight class. And he went out on the mat, and I always, and to this day, I still do the same thing with my youngest son. I'm always trying to figure out, who's he going to wrestle? Because I'm looking at Eric, and I'm looking at the guy that he's fixing to wrestle. And uh, I kept thinking, no, it won't be that guy, because he's much bigger than 145 pounds. But sure enough, the guy he went to wrestle, <clears throat> looked like a gorilla. His shoulders were this wide, he tapered down to about this big, and then my son Eric is skinny. And I thought, how do they both weigh 145 pounds? They went on the mat, they shook hands, and no sooner did they shake hands than Eric is find himself on his back looking up at the lights. That's not a good position to be in. And uh, the whole period he spent on his back, now, when you're on your back, you're using about 10 times more energy than the guy that's holding you on your back. So at the end of the period, he's down five to nothing uh, and, and, and looked completely wore out. And I'm thinking, you know, why don't you just pin yourself and get this over with? But he was not about to have that happen. So they go in the second period, and he starts down again, but this time he gets an escape. So now the score is five to one, and at the end of that period, he actually gets a takedown, which everybody couldn't believe, and the score is five to three. They go to the third period, and there's no scoring until the last five seconds of the match, and he shoots, gets a takedown, and ties it up five to five. Unbelievable. The guy he's wrestling has no business being on the mat with. Uh, they go into overtime, and at the end of the overtime, or the way it was then, he actually had his opponent on his back and was almost pinning him. And I thought about that that night, because there was no reason that Eric should have won the match. He was not the best, but he was the best that he could be. And the other guy was definitely the best, but he wasn't the best that he could be. But the best that he could be beat the best. Now you would think I would learn a lesson. I would think I would learn that lesson. It just happened that the next day, I was playing in a football game. And we were playing a team called San Diego Chargers. And it was, uh, it was at a time when San Diego was down and we were pretty successful. And I remember what happens in that game, uh, not every detail, but I remember we kicked off and uh, the ball hit their uh, return man, uh, bounced off his chest, bounded around on the ground, and one of our guys, after it's kicked around a while, actually gets it, uh, ends up uh, in falling on it in the end zone. And we're ahead six to nothing. Kick the extra point, makes it seven. We kick off again. This time the guy catches it, gets about three yards, and is immediately hit and tackled. So their quarterback, Dan Fouts, comes out on the field, throws a pass, and uh, uh, Mel Blunt intercepts it, takes it back for a touchdown. Now we're ahead 14 to nothing, and, and I've only been out there for two extra points. So we kick off again. This time they, throw, they go three plays, punt, and Lynn Swan catches the ball and takes it back, I don't know how far, but almost scores with it. So we go out on the field for our first offensive play, and, and Terry Bradshaw throws a uh, touchdown pass 
direct to uh, John Stallworth, and we're up 21 to nothing, and I've been on the field for one play. Uh, by the time it was two minutes left in the first half, the score had gotten out of hand, and everybody on the field had kind of, their whole level of intensity had just kind of slipped to going through the motions. And during that time, when there's two minutes left, you know, and the TV's not on the players, I don't know if you ever wonder what the players are doing, but typically we're in the huddle and we're talking about all the situations that we've seen and making sure that the guard, I was playing tackle, that the guard next to me and I were on the same page. And we're going back and forth and making sure that we're not going to set anybody up for, for a mistake. And, uh, and because a mistake is costly to our quarterback. But this time, things had slipped so low, it's never happened to me before, we were talking about actually what we were going to do after the ball game. And during this time, I looked up and I saw my son. Normally in the stands, you can't see anybody, but I happened to see my son, and he was sitting there and he was kind of looking at me like this. And all of a sudden, I was just flooded with this tremendous guilt. And I thought, wow, the night before, he's in a wrestling match. And he's given it everything he got. He's given it everything he has, and he was not the best, but he was the best that he could be, and he won. And now I'm in, an, I'm in a contest, and I'm getting paid for it, and I'm going through the motions. And I was just flooded with this guilt. Well, about that time, the two-minute drill's over, and, and the referee comes in and says, to Terry, call your play, and uh, so he does. And, 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 I, and I realized what happened next was, was really unfair. Because the guy I was playing against had, had just let things slide so far, so far down, and I had just kind of matched that, that he was really going through the motions. And I really, there was no way that I could prepare him for what was about to happen. I couldn't say, look, I've just had this wonderful epiphany, and, uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off the ball as hard as I can, I'm going to put my head gear right in your chin, and I'm going to try and knock you over on your back. And I'm going to do that from now on so this game's over with, and I'm going to line up next week, and next month, and next year, until my career is over, I'm going to do it every play. I didn't have a chance to tell him that, so he doesn't know what's happened. So I will never forget, the, the play was called, and it was Franco was carrying the ball right over left tackle, which was me, and which was a perfect play to do this, and I did. I came off the ball, I hit him in the chin, and over he goes backwards, and now he's giving me the trash talk. Hey man, what's, you know, what's going on? Why you, you know? And I, again, I didn't have the time, there's no way I could explain to him uh, just what had happened and what had transpired. But I will never forget that moment because it really changed my career. And I can also never forget the last time I played a ball game. And it was in uh, December 22nd. And uh, the day before, uh, three days before Christmas, our season was finishing up. And we're playing in Houston. At that time, I'm now 34 years old, and I'm far from the prime of my career, like when we were playing in San Diego. And this time, I'm playing against a, an athlete who happens to be about 6'6", six, six, uh, maybe 6'7". Six, he was 286 pounds, and he was 25 years old, and he ran like a deer. And that whole game, it was all I could do just to hang on. And, uh, and anyway, the game was over with. I was so happy to get through the game without giving up a sack because he was just, he was pounding me this way and he was pounding me that way. And I remember I came home and my wife was anticipating that I would really be in a bad mood. But I was thinking about just what I had learned with Eric in the wrestling match in San Diego. And that the door swings both ways. You cannot always be the best, but you can always be the best that you can be. 